Hey guys, it's been a while. I'm well rested and ready to go. <sighs> Not really, I'm kind of rusty. Let's see if I still got it in me. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Lyle and this is my WNBA 2016 mid-season power rankings. For those of you who are new to this channel, haven't seen the show before, what I like to do is halfway through the season, usually around either the All-Star or Olympic break, whichever one they're doing that year, I take a look at how the teams have performed in the first half of the season and try to predict where they will finish in the second half of the season. And it's because I'm not going to elaborate too much on that because this video is already going to be long enough as it is and I don't feel like having to edit through two hours of footage. So I'm going to try and keep it as short and simple as possible. And we will start the countdown with number 12. Taking our bottom spot are the San Antonio Stars, which no one is really surprised by this. They are one of the worst teams in the league this year. They, and it's sad because Dan Hughes, he's leaving and you, I don't want his career to end like this. But right now, there's not a team in the league that really looks weaker than the Stars. Like, 100% expected them to finish dead last when the season started. They've proven me right all year long. And best we can hope for is that, you know, they might surprise us, put like two or three more wins together at, at the end of the year. But, you know, other than playing, playing spoiler to a few of the playoff hopefuls, like, I don't really expect much of that. They're going to come out and compete the best that they can every night. Unfortunately, the best that they can give isn't really that much at this point. Right now, they're just playing the waiting game. Next, we move up to number 11, which for some of you might be the biggest surprise on this list. For some of you, maybe not so much. I've chosen the Washington Mystics. Now, for me personally, this has been one of the bigger disappointments of the season. And it may seem like I'm being unfair to them, ranking them second to last when they are technically currently a playoff bound team. But they're on the longest losing streak of any team in the league right now. And even though it's hard for me to believe that a Mike T-Ball team would not make the playoffs, you know, it's not like it hasn't happened before. He's had some squads that were unsuccessful. And, you know, with the, the new system that's in place, you know, they can't bank on just being in there because they're in a weaker conference and stuff. I just feel like, you know, they've still got, they're a good team. They've got good players, but they are not playing well this season. And they've got a rough schedule ahead of them. I don't think they're going to have a strong enough finish to hold on to the playoff spot because right now, they're barely in. Technically, they have the 8th seed, but they have the exact same record as Seattle. They're only half a game above Dallas. Hell, even the Sun, who have been fighting the Stars for last place all season, now suddenly they, they're in the fight that they could overtake these guys. And then at number 10, I have put the Dallas Wings. And this is a team I expected them to struggle a little bit at the beginning and then just get better and better as the season goes on, get really hot at the end and finish really strong in order to claim a playoff place. Seems like it's been basically the exact opposite. They started pretty strong, then they started to struggle, then their star players started coming back and they seemed like they were going to start winning again. But they continue to struggle and they are still currently on a very, very long losing streak. They are a good team with a lot of talent, more than capable of making the playoffs. It's just that the way they've played recently, I just don't have enough faith in them to say that they will make it. Next, we move on to number 9, and I have picked the Seattle Storm. First of all, let's get this out of the way. Brianna Stewart is the Rookie of the Year. Why do we even have to wait to the end of the season? Let's just give her the award now. She's already earned it. And on top of that, you've got Drew Lloyd, who's really developed very well as a playmaker. They've still got a great leader in Sue Bird. Alicia Clark's having an amazing year. They've got a lot of talent on the roster. They're capable of really standing up to any team on the, in the league. But you got to win games on the floor. They've had a lot of heartbreaking losses. They've had a lot of amazing wins. You know, they've given up big leads, and they fought back from big deficits. There's been... You know, just if they, they've definitely played with a lot of heart and they've gotten those hearts broken sometimes. And just me, the, it, there's too much reliance on the youth of the team, which is the main reason why I have trouble putting faith in them. 
but also because they do have a tough schedule with the majority of their games being on the road in addition to playing a lot of tough teams. And it's just, like, it's, it's going to be hard to imagine them going down the stretch and being able to just outdo all of these been there, done that before teams. Then we move on to the number eight team on our list, the first playoff seeded team. And the one I have chosen is the Connecticut Sun. Now, Connecticut is a roster that is loaded with talent. They definitely struggled heavily at the beginning of the year, but as the season has dragged on, they have continued to play better and better. Chene looks like she's finally back to form. This roster keeps evolving. They're on a short winning streak. They're only a game out of the playoffs right now, and I feel like they are playing their best basketball at this moment. And I think they're going to come back well-rested, energized, with plenty to fight for. And I think this is a team that's capable of beating any team in the league. Next up at number seven, I have placed the Phoenix Mercury. And the reason I put them this low is because I feel like there's been plenty of turmoil early in the season. And I think there will be even more to come later. Currently, just looking at how they performed the first half of the year, they're 3-8 and eight in road games. They're 2-8 and eight versus Western Conference teams. And if you look at the remaining schedule, more than half of their games are on the road. More than half of their games are versus Western Conference opponents. More than half of their games are against teams that are currently above them in the standings. So the majority of games, you can look at two or three reasons why they could easily be expected to win, just from a numbers perspective. That being said, I've learned never to underestimate Diana Taurasi. She is the ultimate competitor. You know, Penny Taylor, this is her swan song, so you, she, you, she's going to come out with some fire. You know, looking, they're going to look to make a late push. Of course, Brittany Griner, she's continued to develop. Yeah, they've got a very strong roster, capable of winning games. It's just hard to put faith in them right now because they have played disappointingly bad this season. And it's not even necessarily that they've played bad. It's just that they have, they've played ugly. It's just they haven't won. Like, that's above all else. It is, you can't just say that, oh, they've got great players who have played well most of the time and that that means they're a great team. You know, it comes down to can you win games? And they haven't done that cons as consistently as a lot of other teams. Next up at number six, I have chosen the Chicago Sky. This franchise has made the playoffs every single year since drafting Elena Deladon. So as long as she is healthy, I don't expect that to ever change. Not to mention the fact that they have started surging recently. You know, the past few weeks before the season took went on break, they started playing their best basketball after making a surprising change to their lineup where they basically took all of their starters, put them on the bench, took a bunch of the younger players from the bench, put them in the starting lineup, including Imani Boyette, who's really came into her own very early in this league. You know, they've, they've played surprisingly well and I, they, they, they just look the most powerful that they have all year. You know, they struggled more than I expected them to, and like they were starting to be, they were starting to put a lot of doubts in my head. But in recent recent games, they've started to turn that around. I've started to believe in them again, and they do look like a very powerful team that can finish wet strong going into the second half. I don't expect them to be seeded all that highly, but they definitely will gather enough wins to keep themselves in the playoffs. Then we move on to number five. I have chosen the Atlanta Dream. They started off the season incredibly hot, took a huge nosedive, they recovered fairly well, and now they're just continuing to float around that 500 mark. And for me, it's hard to ever root for the Atlanta Dream because I'm not sure which version of them to, that I will see on any given night. There are times when we've seen flashes of greatness, and then there are times when it's just, ugh. And they're still a good enough team that even if they just finish 500, you know, they've, they've played well enough that the first half of the year that they'll still be in the playoffs. And I think anything short of just losing every single game from here to the end, there's very little chance that they get knocked out because they do have a fairly decent cushion. And even though they may not be the best in the league, the, if you look at a few of the games on the schedule, it's hard to believe that they could go 0-10 the rest of the way down. Then at number four, I have decided to put the Indiana Fever, Tamika Catchings in her final season, and she's still playing at an incredibly high level. 
and you worry about how much gas she has left in the tank but you also know that you're not going to stop her from going on the floor and giving it her all every single night and she can get this team into the playoffs through sheer force of will they've got a great rookie in Tiffany Mitchell that any other season she would be one of the leading candidates for rookie of the year but not this season unfortunately she just she was part of the wrong draft class or the right draft class, because this is one of the deepest draft classes I've seen in all the years that I've been watching. There's a lot of talent across the board that's already, already in their first year showing up and making huge impacts. Anyways, I digress. Long story short, this is a very strong team that was in the finals last year and basically returns the exact same roster. And so they stand a legitimate chance against every single team that they face. They're a very gritty team that will be able to grind out a few enough wins that they will keep themselves in the playoffs. And then once you get there, it's a whole nother game. Next, we move on to the top three, and I don't think there are going to be too many surprises here. We start with the third team on the list, who we have... Da, 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 the New York Liberty, easily the best team in the Eastern Conference. Tina Charles is having a career year, could easily come away with her second MVP trophy. And you've got, as far as I'm aware, the last I checked, they're still expecting Epiphany Prince back at some point in time. And in all honesty, the only reason why they're stuck in third place is just because of their inability to defeat the Lynx and the Sparks. They've already lost the season series to both of them. So in a tiebreaker scenario, those they would both have the advantage. So the only way for them to get above third place would be not only do the Liberty have to win the majority of their games from here to the end of the season, they'd have to hope for a bunch of losses from the Lynx and Sparks, which I don't see that happening. Next up, we have the number two seed, which a lot of people will agree with and the rest of you will all hate me for. I have put the Minnesota Lynx. Now, they've had an amazing start to their season and once again, Maya Moore, as long as she's in the league, she's just going to get the team 20 wins. That's just how it happens. They've already clinched the playoff berth along with the Sparks. And they've had a fantastic season, and the only reason they are the second seed is because the LA Sparks have had an unbelievably amazing season. Shut up, computer. They have four Olympic players on their roster, which, you know, that explains why they played so well. Unfortunately, it's also the reason why I kept them at number two, and also nearly put them at number three, but then the whole tiebreaker thing made me think, yeah, I'll keep them at two. Their, basic, their entire starting lineup is still going to be playing throughout this Olympic break, so they don't get as much rest as a lot of other teams. So fatigue could start to become a factor down the stretch, and their bench play could start becoming a major key to whether or not they're able to finish strong down the stretch. They've got a fairly tough schedule, which includes a four-game road trip, and one of those four games is against the Sparks, and a game that, is th that decides who wins the season series, and possibly could be the game that determines who is the number one seed. Then, of course, we reach our number one seed, which, if you've been paying attention, you can pretty much guess already, or by this point you've already read the description. We, I have chosen the Los Angeles Sparks as the number one team to finish with the best record in the league at the end of the season when all is said and done. And the reason I've chosen them is that, one, they're currently the number one seed, only by a small margin, but still, I think it'll be easy for them to hold on to it when you look at who they've got on their roster. Now, they've got uh, Candace Parker, who is just, she can do literally anything that this team needs her to. And she will. She will do whatever they ask her to, including this year taking a backseat to NECA, who's having a record season, and she could come away with her first MVP trophy. And also surprisingly, the team with the best record in the league doesn't have any Olympic players on their roster. And they also don't have any UConn graduates on their roster, but we won't get into that controversy. That's a whole nother video we can talk about. The, th the point I'm trying to make is that they are going to have plenty of rest and relaxation to recuperate from any little minor nagging annoying injuries and continue to perfect their game plan. You know, they've, they've got, they're, so they're going to be able to come into the second half of the season recharged and ready to go. So, that's it. Those are my WNBA 2016 midseason power rankings. 
and the next video that I put up on this channel will be the newest edition of WNBA Weekly when the season returns Friday, August 26th. So, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe, all that bullshit. You know how it works. And until the next time you see me in a video, my name is Nathan Lyle. This has been The Fan Perspective. I hope you have a great day.